The Hunger Games is back and this time we're going 64 years before the events of the first Hunger Games film. And in this film, I have a lot to talk about here. So we're going to get into the review of that right now because yes, folks, it is time for my review of the new film, The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the channel today for another review. And today, we're going to be reviewing the new film, The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, coming to theaters November 17th. So, when you talk about the overall Hunger Games franchise, this is the fifth film. This is the prequel. As I mentioned, it is 64 years before the first Hunger Games film. Um, this is also based on the 2020 novel, The Ballad of the Songbirds and Snakes. So if you kind of <laughs> do the math here, as soon as this novel was released, they already had plans that they wanted to get a film done with it as well. And rightfully so, because uh, whether you love the novels, whether you love just the films, there is a fan base behind it. And overly, I was interested. I was definitely, over I was definitely interested. And um, a lot of the reasons is because if you haven't read the novels, at some point you wanted to know why are they even called the Hunger Games? The first four films never addressed it at all. This film literally addresses it the first 15 to 20 minutes in terms of how did they title these specific games as the Hunger Games. So they absolutely address it. And like, yes, maybe they hinted at it. Maybe it was implied, but they never specifically addressed it like they did in this film. So thank you, finally. Um, but truly, um, you're, you're, you're interested in this film for a couple of reasons. The cast, which we'll talk about, or the characters, because the fact that we get to go back to understand how and why the games were created. And then one of our most important characters in Coriolanus Snow, going back to when he was 18 and understanding just this transformation of a person, you know, this diabolical villain that we know in, you know, the first four films. But seeing him as a likable young teen in this, and, and and even when you go back to his childhood, like when he was, you know, very, very young, you know, you, you wonder, well, well, how and why would create this transformation? So, you know, you, you, you go back um, in this film, starting off this film uh, three years before the first Hunger Games, so you get an idea of, like, just the landscape of uh, the district, you know? And, and, and then you move forward 10 years to the 10th annual Hunger Games uh, and where a majority of the movie takes place. So, yes, it is an origin story for Snow um, and his songbird, Lucy Gray. Uh, so it is a love story to that extent. Uh, but it's a love story that goes wrong. <laughs> so there's that. Um but yeah, when you talk about the cast involved with this, I mean, there is a lot. First of all, I want to go with the big names here. Peter Dinklage as Cass Highbottom, who is uh, very much uh, one of the catalysts to the creations of the game. He also happens to be best friends with uh, Corio Snow, um, father uh, who Corio Snow is played by Tom Blythe uh, so Tom alongside of Rachel Zegler uh, who is Lucy Gray who is our two leads here that's our love couple there you know um, but nonetheless yeah we talk about the big names and then you got Viola Davis who comes in as Dr. Gold Viola is fantastic you expect nothing less Peter Dinklage is fantastic you expect nothing less. I got to talk about my MVP of 2023, and that is Jason Schwartzman, 
who is, well, <laughs> a character that you know, Lucky Flickerman, who, if you've just seen a uh, quiz lady, this man, along with the spot also in uh, across the spider verse, um, and even something else recently as well, too. Jason has been having one hell of a year and his performance in this film truly, truly should be talked about uh, because man, did he bring it? He is must watch the entire time. Um, yeah, he's in the new Scott Pilgrim, Spot, Scott Pilgrim uh, takes off animated uh, series coming to uh, Netflix. So kind of repraising his role there. I mean, listen, this this guy is just all over the place and he is having one heck of a year. Uh, but yeah, you're going to enjoy his character and his character, <laughs> the evolution of his character over the years in terms of being the host of the Hunger Games. You get to see him do it for the first time here. Uh, so it's, it's, it's entertaining on that. But yeah, there's so many other folks that could spotlight because, you know, the Hunger Games. You need two representatives from each district. So those are so many different folks that over um, the duration of the film, we get to know. And while it typically was focused on uh you know the contestants should we say uh and and just you know these representatives from the different districts we also get to highlight the mentors because each person has a mentor where they get to know you sort of make them marketable so if you make them marketable then people want to donate give them money obviously rooting for them and presenting them a better opportunity to uh win the hunger game so yes you get you know, two people from each district plus their mentors. And this is just an array of characters that you are um, accustomed to uh, over the film. And yes, you're going to find folks you like, folks you don't like, folks you are suspicious about, and all sorts of different things. So you're getting all that. And I, I, I'll be 100% honest. There's definitely some characters that you just become overly protective with because um, you know the Hunger Games and you know just uh, the stakes of the Hunger Games. There's, there's particular characters where... You just, you, you don't wish an ill fate for it. I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll go into a little bit of detail here, but there's absolutely um, an artistic participant out of a district. So you instantly say this isn't fair. You instantly, you know, empathize for this character um, and, 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 and just the stakes of the game and the brutality of the game and all. But like in this particular character, like she just doesn't, fair a, a, a good chance against the others so you know there's all those sorts of different things that much like the other hunger games where you connect with these characters you you, you tend to lean towards your favorites or you, you empathize with particular characters and um it's just the same with this one as well just like the other ones it's just the same on that note um but uh yeah let me let me finish going over a couple of things because this is a, i got a lot of like details and notes with this like again viola davis character she's the game master as i may, mentioned peter dinklage character uh who was snow's father best friend they're the creator of the games uh and and, and then when you talk about our leads here our leads are truly uh which, which carries the film and again tom and rachel so t you know rachel we know from hamilton what do you expect from a, 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 a actor such as herself? Every scene she steals. I mean, she's just radiant with energy, such a commanding presence. And then her vocals, you just have to just be quiet and listen because her range, the, the, the rawness in it, like you just, you, you, you hear the passion behind her vocals, uh, which is completely necessary for uh, one of the, the, the tributes of well, District 12, because District 12 clearly is the Chicago Bulls of, <laughs> of the Hunger Games. But like instantly you, you should become such a likable character. And, and and the moment you hear her sing, you root for her, you cheer for her, you, you, you want to see her thrive. But ultimately, it's just a fantastic performance. Uh, Rachel showed up and showed out in this film. I think she is... Um, Definitely destined for a bright, bright future in acting across the board. Um, so, yeah, so I love the songs and musical um, selections. Uh, again, very strong vocals on that note. Um, 
And then the CGI, it, much like all the previous Hunger Games, the CGI always looks pretty cool. Um, and, 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 and yes, it doesn't look practical. I don't think it ever intends to look practical. I just looks really cool how they use it. And there's a particular scene where there's an explosion and, um, and a particular building kind of enclosed in each other. I thought that scene was just done very well. I was super engaged in that scene. Um, you, you kind of feel, um, you almost kind of put yourself in these character shoes in terms of trying to escape and, and, and the desperation for their life. I just thought they, they really shot that scene uh, very cool. Um, but again, much like the other Hunger Games, I, I, the CGI, not it, while not looking practical, always seems to look pretty cool in my eyes. Um, and yeah, I, you know, if it's not clear at this rate now, this movie is nothing but just background information about the origin story of snow but snow obviously and the love interest with lucy gray his protection of lucy gray because that's his mentor and want to see her succeed and win but ultimately survival of the 10th annual and hunger games with a lot of other folks having their hand in the pot because they want the games to thrive and succeed because they want this to be a measure of entertainment for years to come and ratings 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 it's, it's about ratings i mean and when you kind of look at the duality of things it's no different than like folks being a fan of combat sports it's like while it is bru brutal why it's barbaric you know we watch it because it's entertaining it's fun and and, and the people that that's behind them wants these things to thrive so they can continue to put on shows each and every year so it's a lot of that except you just have a love a love story happening from a mentor to a tribute uh, within it but last thing i want to say about this film this film was not perfect it did have some good moments but it certainly has some moments that was just completely questionable um and and i thought the snow character development was very very fast um and, and the progress at sometimes was just so quick that certain you know certain progressions felt unnecessary and almost unbelievable at times it's just i don't want to give anything away but like the the way how this character was developing was this almost as if you were missing something you know and granted he's 18 so you kind of have to kind of place yourself in being 18 and you know you, you having your first love and and whether it's a, a love success story or as i mentioned a love story gone wrong you just kind of think how a person's going to react and, and there was a lot of reacting without reasoning should i add so the film third act truly if this film and which i'm very confident that they're going to want to stress this out to another film before we eventually catch up to um the the uh the first hunger games film so if this is the 10th annual you start to wonder like at what point are they going to try to catch up to uh what's the first film i believe was the uh i can't remember what what annual that one was but at some point you're gonna you, you're gonna wonder at what point are they gonna want to catch up to that particular instance of the hunger game with that edition of the hunger games um because the third act of this film easily could have just been another film. The toning, the almost the restarting of things, while there is continuity between the first two acts and the third act, it could have easily been its, its own third film. It just goes in a different direction that just, I felt like almost just negates everything that happened in the first part of the film. Because like, the easiest way to put it, while the first two parts of the film and kind of how I'm measuring things is very much focused on the Hunger Games and very much focused on the capital. Then they take things to District 12 and the aesthetic is all different, of course, as you would expect, but the tone in is different. And then all the star power that lives and exists in the capital is no longer in the film, which is to me like, why have a film and not have Viola featured or or have Peter fe uh, featured or Jason because you're focusing on our leads. And that's fine. But our leads can lead us through multiple films. It just felt like it was unnecessary for them to edit this film in a way that took the third act to the film as if it was almost its own standalone chapter, its own standalone film. 
or a, 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 a you know a first phase of another film to come i i just don't understand so you know, I think they went away from our very intriguing supporting characters to this focus on our two leads, uh, which to me, I felt like just kind of devalues everything that was built up early. I mean, granted, you're so invested into Viola's character, to Peter's character, to, to Jason's character, that you want them somehow, some way involved in the story, and they shift it to just our two leads going forward and the love story aspect of it. So... You know that that's just my thoughts man i thought i thought that could have been handled a lot better and maybe they're not going to have another film maybe that's the reason why but ultimately by knowing that the first film you know <laughs> the first set of films were four and knowing that there's money to be made you would think that there could be potential interest in going forward with another film before we ultimately get to the events of um the first hunger game so i don't know and and also too yeah there's some by there there there's some easter eggs in there and you, you know you're going to be wondering when you're going to hear something about katniss or Peta or any of that sort yeah there's a little bit of that in there when it happens you're just like oh did they say the thing did they is that the thing yep it's it's there so keep your eyes peeled from easter egg activity because it's in the film but nonetheless there was parts of this film I liked. There was parts I was kind of okay with, but it's certainly a watch. So you totally want to check out the new Hunger Games film, which again is coming to theaters November 17th. Folks, this is the Hunger Games, the Ballad of Songbirds and Snake. Get in the comments. Let me know your thoughts about this when you check it out. And as always, stay tuned for more reviews very soon.